Anyway, <laughs> uh, so it hit me, man. It fucking hit me. The rock bug hit you. I could still do this shit, man. So what was the what was the game? What was the the plan from there? Did you say like? Did you talk to Mike and say no? We got- Mike kept on fucking being in my ear. Wow. In my ear. So even after that battle with Tiny, he still had to kind of chase you down to get you involved. He had to really hammer me because Mike was doing his thing. Mike was on his dream and his quest of bringing certain answers to the top, certain views and certain... Because it was a inquisitive thing with Mike. You know, Mike was on this thing of bringing all the OGs and all this thing and bringing this just to answer questions, not to make a crew or anything, just to answer questions and bring us in old view because Mike had these feelings. Okay. So he found each one of us. But... After that, Mike kept on in my ear. I'm like, yo, Mike, that was it, man. That was it, man. My wow. arthritis is kicking in. So you were still resisted. I was still resisting Mike, but every day on 56th Street, he would come. Ba, 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 ba. Now he had my fucking number. Now he would call me. Okay. Now we're going to go move faster. I was still fat. Now he managed to get all of us together. All the original masterminds and spin together. Wow. So what was that first time seeing the your 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 these are your friends. My these peers, are your my peers. Fellow mates. These are people that you haven't seen in how long? In years. Oh, Renee was that gymnastic guy from the original. Sorry, Renee. It was badass gymnastics burner. So talk about that first time when, when Mike got y'all all together. Yo, we all looked at each other like, yo, you fat. Yo, you old. <laughs> yo, look at that shit. So we did like maybe half a song, not even half a song, in Macarian Park, and that was it. And then just talk and yap it up, yap. Then Mike was, Mike brought us, I don't know who got that clip. Mike brought us to a fucking uh, a, a gym or a hall, somewhere like a, what you got in your in your establishment downstairs. Yeah. Oh, this was a, a, a practice for a video that was a, a documentary video that Bam from the Dynamic Rockers. Popping Liquid Robot Bam was doing to a Mexican song, you know? And at that time, Bam was um, in church. So they were doing a, 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 a movie, a religious movie, you know? And we were going to be in that movie on that part only. So um, we were getting ready for that. Yo. Mike had us on that set, well, on that chin floor, going off to all these songs. And, yo, you needed respirators, ventilators, Nurses, doctors, all kind of shit. Oh, man, because we were all just falling out. Man. So, so, you know, your history, that was, in, that was like your teens, your early adulthood. Now y'all coming back in your 40s and your 50s. Yeah. And all y'all, similarly to you, everyone else was doing the same thing. They left the rock. They all got jobs. Yeah. And they all, and they all, or lived. They all lived. So everyone was kind of on the same path as you, you like coming back basically yes and we were like yo love and hugs and everything yo wow. we can still do this and we did that scene which maybe you put I got up the footage yeah, I got yeah the footage of that. in in the church movie um i would love to get those edited scenes man look there's more rocking in the, in that in those footages okay you know there's a hell of a lot of rocking and a lot of scenes that were cut because when you make a movie you got to cut scenes of course so there's a lot of scenes that were cut off. The rumble scene in the Bronx. We filmed in East New York and in the Bronx. So a lot of scenes were left off. You know what I'm saying? But what you got on that foot is one of the scenes that were used. The block party scenes and where we were outside and all that. But again, we were all still out of shape. We were still fat. Me, Final, uh, Dash, uh, Rubber Band. You know, that was the, the mastermind coming now. Now the idea was like popping. So okay. Now the idea started looping. It's looping. So me and Mike was, my, well, my, more Mike. Because I kept on looking at him like, you fuck. So we were talking, talking, talking. Mike was like, yo, what do you think? So the, now the original Mastermind Rockers was on and off. Because they were leaving life. They were, li- they were leaving. Life. Yeah. I was already divorced. So I could do this. So I went, I went back to the fucking gym. And I worked out seven days a week and did the fat burners and everything. And I came back looking like a crackhead. 
everybody thought I was on crack. <laughs> I went from being mid 180s to 190 to being solid 120, wearing 28 pants and burning solid as fuck and fast as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So my first outing of looking like a crackhead was at the damn, at Crazy Legs' birthday party in Delancey Street. That's a very famous take, too, where you see all of us going off in that circle. And a couple other guys that uh, I would lead a battle, you know what I'm saying, and become good friends with. Heated battles. Yo. Phantom, big ups to you, man. He gave me, he gave me two of my heated, most heated battles. You know what I'm saying? And we became, and we became good, good friends. friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, and that scene, you're gonna see all of us in one circle. That the the, the movie is the the scene is like green and white. So, yeah, it's and like I'm night, all in like white. A, it's like a night vision type. Yeah, of thing. night vision, and I'm yeah. all in white. I'm weighing one twenty, yo. What, what club was that at? That was the Delancey. The Delancey over there upstairs. Uh, uh no, or that was downstairs. downstairs. Okay, by the bridge. Delancey and you know by the how bridge. small that motherfucking. Wow. So, uh, it's it's no, it was upstairs. It was upstairs. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so it's Crazy Lex's birthday party. He was DJing, and we all got busy. And a whole bunch of badasses was in there. Dynasties was in there. Masterminds was in there. Uh, I don't know if you want to call them Zulu Kings or Ready to Rock was in there. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, a whole bunch of people in there, you know what I'm saying, from each club. And we made that big-ass motherfucking dance circle. And, and you see it. You see it. Yeah. You see it. Um, you see everybody going off and clips of everybody doing their thing in different styles and all that. Uh, so then I was like, yeah. So then after that, Michael dragged me to each nightclub, each party, and battle people. Through all these time, I was battling people during the weekdays, during the weekends, at each party, each jam, each anniversary. Mike was dragging me to battle these people. And that was like my training, I don't know. And we still didn't have Mastermind Rockers yet. The new, the new, we, still didn't do, we still didn't do the new generation yet. It was just me and Mike first, okay? And during that time, I was teaching Mike, uh, teaching people, started to teach people, but we didn't have Mastermind Rockers yet. And then um, one day we sat down, we started talking, boom, 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 boom. And he said, so we were trying to put a crew together, what would we call it? I said, well, we're always here fucking practicing in between Greenpoint and Williamsburg and where McCarran Park. And the famous crew that came out of Williamsburg, rocking crew, burning crew, I consider it was the Mastermind Rockers. You know, Williamsburg section slash Greenpoint borderline was the Mastermind Rockers. So why don't we just call ourselves the Mastermind Rockers? You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's when Mike started reaching out to the original Mastermind Rockers for permission to use the name. And that, and that would be like Fano. Fano, E.G. E.G. Um, well, it was Dash, Fano, and, um, oh, you hear that? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you hear that. Uh, uh, Dash, Fano, um, who else? Rubber Band, they gave us the blessings. Boom, law. But then, um, I'm going to keep it straight up. Yeah, I was there. E.G. said, nope. They were resistant to it. They were resistant to it. Words were uh, exchanged. Um, if you remember, B-Boy Massacre was supposed to be original Mastermind Rockers with me and Mighty Mike against Seven Gems. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So the, the birth of the new generation had to take over. And that happened. That came back. We were all in Break Easy's home. When the, of course, when we went to Brooklyn... I don't know what club in Park Slope or somewhere. It was supposed to be the original Master of Mind Rockers against, and with me and Mike against Seven Gems. But somebody put it in the head, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, okay, yes, outrightly so, you got to battle your way in. So EG and several other members, nah, nah, y'all got to have to battle your way in. Which took place in Chuck's backyard. Yep, yep. I at, remember that Mastermind at, anniversary, at 2012, maybe or yeah. 13. Yeah. So, or the rocks. I don't know what it was, but yeah, Mastermind anniversary was it? Yeah, Mastermind anniversary. So that took place in that backyard. We had to battle in order to become Mastermind rockers, though we already had the blessings from the press, okay, from the final dash and rubber band who were presses. So wait, I'm slightly confused. 
you weren't you a part of it already or did you just have to ask for the blessings to continue on the name no we were already um on already we already had the crew yes it was slowly growing it was me mike tiny uh lenny jimmy who else spin who else? This is before. So this is the new generation. The new generation. This is before you. Okay. So you had to battle. You had to battle EG for the name to in order to take it to continue on with yes. the new. The new. We had to people. get. We had to battle against Beto, EG, Dash. Yep, I saw that. Manny. That was a vicious battle, man. And uh, yeah, we had to really. Why, get why it did he up. grab your leg like that? <laughs> because he never seen that kick burn coming in. <laughs> Boom! And yeah. I left it there to show him I got in. Yeah. So all right, it's cool. You grab my leg, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I didn't yeah. like it, but. I showed you that I got in and I got it in there. You know what I'm saying? But if I would have fell, even though I, you know, we're brothers, if yeah. I would have fell on the floor, it would have been a problem. It would have been a maybe confrontation after yeah. that because yeah, I yeah, fell yeah. on the floor and I that constitute as physically touching someone. Yeah, because I didn't does. kick, I kicked you, he but I didn't touch. Definitely grabbed you. your leg, yo. That's you know? you, I, I always remember that, yo. And so you you so you 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 continued the name. Mike spoke with you. Y'all continued the name. Talk about the early days of the new formation of, of the new Mastermind Rockers. Oh, oh yeah. So once the new generation started. Or or even before we get to the new generation, that period where you and Mike were just going from jam to jam, club to club, this to that. How were you finding these new members? Were they seeing it and being like, yo, that's dope. Oh, train me. Or you were picking people out that had potential. No, because um, going to club and club, it was for me to battle. Okay. For me to battle people, which led me to battle famous names, you know what I'm saying, and then um the very first guy that I uh, that I took to the new generation was Tiny, Tiny when he um when he left Dynasty, this was in Break Easy's basement and we we talked right there boom 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 after um because he saw me battle a legend and he saw how we got down. You know, a legend who I love dearly, Little Dave. You know, that's my iconic legend. You know, um, I love his style. I love Little Dave to pieces, man. You know, I didn't want to battle him, but it was a heated call out. He never saw me in his life, though I battled kids from his crew, and it had to happen, I guess. I don't know. So Tiny was the very first member. Then came Lenny from Poland. You know, Lenny was a people, right? Then came Lenny. Then came Jimmy, who also I met in Break Easy's. This was in Break Easy's basement. Yo, Break Easy's basement is a landmark for some people that don't man. know. Break Easy, yeah. Dynasty Rock. Many battles in the basement. Uh, with everybody. And and I mean, this guy has opened up his, his, his realm, you know what I mean? And a lot of le legendary battles, a lot and of legendary names from names. worldwide came in his basement. And the basement is like. And uh, <laughs> Break Easy, who I, I call Brooklyn's historian. Yeah, his basement was the shit, man. You got in that little square, he had the line drawn and everything with a tape. You got in that little squared area in between his DJ equipment and his albums. <laughs> and yo, it was a pit. It was a real looking live pit. No way to move. You went head to, yo, you went head to head. So a lot of battles down there, man. I witnessed. So, and I so, when, so the new mastermind is starting to form. Starting to form. Is you and Mike at the top. At the Headrunners, you have Tiny as your first disciple. disciple. Tiny already got experience. It's Tiny, and then Lenny, and then James now. James battled in Break Easy's basement also. Now, James could dance. James is Korean-American. The second Korean-American that badass that can rock. Uh, the first guy i ever seen, the first Korean-American was... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm old now. I forgot his fucking name. Man. Um, through politics, he left also, but he was badass himself. Um... And he was taught by uh, other people in Bushwick, he learned, and Little Dave, and he was badass. But James got smoked in Break Easy's basement, but James can dance. And I saw that. James had good freestyle and drops. And I pulled James over and said, Yo, you need to blah, 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 blah. And this is when we're going to do this. So James, now James, Lenny, Mike, and Tiny, here's um, studio. We started holding these teachings. I was, where I was mentoring them, teaching them. That was the first set of the new generation coming in new generation and how was that how was that time period for you like how was it how did you like it how did you like the new formation of the new mastermind rockers and well it was still fresh okay it was still fresh it was still coming in and 
Fano would come in and on and off because Fano was married and going through his thing too, and um, he couldn't be there all the time. But you know, Fano would come in and practice and give hinters and men and mentor the old school Burns also. But then he couldn't come around. But it was mostly me teaching them. Okay. And um, it was still growing, and just and I was still. It was, the scene was still fresh, and I was still loving, and I was still battling outside. Yes. Okay. So in this time period, everything's starting to pop back up. You've gone to jams. You've gone to clubs. You've gone to parties. You're obviously seeing The Rock represented in a certain way. When Mike brought it to you, I know that a lot of what was the motivation for you guys was bringing your style, this new style that y'all kind of innovated and brought back what um, was the reception to coming in with that style of double burning that style of of, of doing what i do of, of different styles of jerks like what was the reception from the community the rocking community y'all was going against um this is brooklyn only because in bronx and manhattan upper man not les les dance like brooklyn um i'm talking about when y'all came back when i came back and i started because mike asked me yo what do you think about this blah 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 blah, blah. And even when I was younger, like I told you before, I was tired of that single burning, burn, jerk, and burn system. Okay. I was tired of it, and I created my style. So I had to do it all over again. On behold, time later, years later again. I told Mike, Mike, do this. I'm going to show you why. Bah, 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 bah. I broke it down to him. Mm. And um, I started teaching them. I, cre- I went back, and I added more now. Now I added more vocabulary to my style because now I'm older I brought back all my old vocabulary and I added more new vocabulary and I introduced it to my new members and my new students and um again I got backlash because and it's on video and it's on footages how people were talking about, about us and we could hear it how double jerks and this and that and too much of this and too much of that and we didn't dance like this, and traditional ways is the better way. And I respect to the traditional way and where it comes from. I always respect, utmost respect that way, and still like that way. But my way was a different way. So we wore the black hats and the black suits, the black cowboy hats, like outlaws. And we had to punch our way through the walls and force our way in. And we burned a lot of motherfuckers that way. And people still didn't accept us. And still don't accept us to this day in the background. But now they want to be us. Hmm. Anyway, oh, want to do our style. This is 2020, and now our style is being accepted. And videos don't lie. Because when I battled most of those guys, they didn't do that. They didn't do what's been done now. You know, and I battled over how many years I've been on the scene? Hmm. I'm out of count since 2008. Okay? All right? Since 2009, I battled all the best of every city and every country. And I seen those styles, and they weren't master my style. You know what I'm saying? I'm not biting my tongue either. But I'm not disrespecting those styles either. Big ups to those styles. Big up, listen, don't twist my words. Big up to those styles and respect to those styles. They are inspirations to many others also. Okay? All right? Either from Uptown, Midtown, or across Brooklyn. From Park Slope to Bushwick, much respect to those styles, all right? I have nothing against those styles. But just like Sensei Sifu Lee said, let's all go in a circle and test it out, in a sense of words, and see what style works. And uh, obviously, videos online, my style was working. That's it. There we go. That's it. Yo, we're going to take a little commercial break for Talking Rock. This is Vitamin the Governor. I'm here with none other than Legendary Ringo, and we will be back right after this. Yo, 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 we are back. This is Talking Rock. We're back. Just took a little short break. Went through a lot of history, and we're now talking uh, a little bit about the formation of uh, 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 the reformation of Mastermind Rockers. So there was that early Mastermind Rockers reformation. And then out of that, you know, that kind of dissipated a little bit, of course. People had to, people got on with lives, um, things like that. But the constant was always you, Mike, and Tiny, and Spin. 
talk about the recruitment of the the, the new roster. Okay, so um, Lenny moved away. Lenny moved back to Poland. So th- and then James moved to Philadelphia to be, to pro- his studies in law and become a lawyer. So now it's just me, Tiny, and um, Mike. So, um, in between two things, I was teaching a young lady who would later become the queen, the new queen, Miss Goody Rock, okay? And then I met a few brothers at, a, at, uh, at their jam, at their homegrown jam I met them, and I loved what I saw. And then they came to our anniversary, and that would be the, the next generation these brothers right here, which would be Biderman, Chauncey, and Chad from the Floor Royalty Crew. I saw they had super potential and flavor, and so I fell in love with them. And I said, yo. And slowly, um, I remember the cordial meetings and the cordial um, sharing and ask, can you t- show us this? And, I sh- and with love, I would go to their center and teach them. And um, they were picking up super fresh fast and looking super fresh. So I told Mike, yo, Mike, you got to look at these guys, man. These guys are picking up super fresh, funky, fast. And finally, I couldn't hold them. I said, yo, we got to recruit these guys, man. So the first out of the two um, was Vitamin, your host, you know. And, um, yeah, he was the first. And um, I remember getting together with him more often and mentoring him and showing him and teaching him. And he was picking up, soaking it up, just as later Chauncey and Chad were, which came later on, you know, right behind him, but a little after. And then Goody also, and the pieces were finally coming together, boom, until that day came, boom, they finally, they, they battled their way in, they became junior masterminds, then the rest came from abroad. Once we started having... Our practices from abroad came Ecuador. And this is after Jackie now, because already Vitamin and Goody was already... And you had Knuckles also from Korea. Korea. Oh, we had KJ, who was also my... uh, Just as the rest, I was teaching, who stood in my house. I would teach, who would stay in my house weeks and weeks, coming from Atlanta, where he went to school at. And uh, he would stay on his summer internship and stay in my house between Break Easy and me. He would stay at our houses, but he was staying with me, and I was teaching him for hours, for hours. Everything was rock with this kid. He was only 15 years old, but I was teaching him, teaching him, teaching him. And he was an, another future star, you know, and who would come before Vitamin and before Goody, you know what I'm saying? So now it was, she, it was Lenny, Jackie, no, it was Lenny, uh, uh, Jimmy, Tiny, and KJ now. Then came... Uh, knuckles from Korea who found me and we didn't understand each other but he was through hand signals and ske- gestures was telling me you you and I'm like what the fuck is this guy talking he don't talk English following me in a jam El Bajo museum for hours following me I'm like yo I'm getting stalked <laughs> 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 and finally another Korean American translated and finally it was understood and then Knuckles would stay in my house for the rest of his vacation, and I was teaching Knuckles, and then I brought, reunited Knuckles and KJ, and it was, woo! Yo, it was Korean town in my house, practicing in my room, all of us. So then Knuckles came in. And so, so it was crazy how the pieces were put together. You know what I'm saying? So now it was a floor royalty crew who become junior masterminds, Goody Rock, and then came Ecuador, Switzerland. You know what I'm saying? And I, whoa, France! Doing our practices where we gained Noya, Swiss Rock, you know what I'm saying? Remy and Jefferson, Pereque, you know? And then C Rock, who I would teach in, in New Jersey, who was MBK, full time B boy, who I was teaching in, in Jersey in uh, Rival's studio, where Rival held court in MBK Studios, where I first met the whole MBK, the original MBK. And I would teach. Most of them, but I would teach more C Rock. You know what I'm saying? And I would go out to Jersey and teach more C Rock and teach some of them, but it was more C Rock. Then he came into the crew. You know what I'm saying? So the formation of the crew was like bananas. I said, Yo, Mike, 
they're getting bananas. They're getting funky fresh. We got to... And lo and behold, they battle their way in. I'm saying, and the new generation, boop. And that was it. The junior mastermind and the tradition of the original mastermind was formed. I'm saying? And they will become the next chapter of the new mastermind rockers. And what... What are some of like when the new Mastermind Rockers formed and you created this roster, what about this new Mastermind Rockers stood out? Do you oh. think to the people and uh, to the, you know, and then on top of that, um, they how did that make you and Mike feel? Like, how did that? Well, I mean, we still was teaching, you know, but the new Mastermind was growing. They were growing up. They were practicing. When we weren't around, they were really practicing and you could see it in them and they were applying all the skills and they were just flavorful. The cup was growing and their cup was added more and more and more and more and when those new masterminds battle, people saw the difference and then later on I started taking them with me across seas. Okay, With Goody Rock being the first one going across seas and they knew she was special. Goody Rock, she went off in how many countries? Shit. She did her thing. Okay? Then you guys did your thing in every jam. The new the other guys that didn't travel, they did the jam. At every jam would represent hardcore and battle. You know what I'm saying? But um when the guys from overseas stayed here, they were going we were all went to battles and you guys held it down in the ciphers. I was just like, oh shit. Watching them like these guys are fucking badasses now. You know, and eventually guys grow and grow amongst themselves. And who are you today? You're the ambassadors and the killers of the game. You know, y'all took it to the next level. Now I'm a fan of my own group. <laughs> Word, that's you know dope, man. That's dope. It kind of came around like full circle, full man. Full circle, man. Um, the seeds were drawn. My job is done. What is about? What is it about you one thing I get from you and one thing I've heard from a lot of people from you is is they just love the way you teach. What is it in you that, that gives you that passion to teach and spread your knowledge? Um, it's not to create right or wrong or to bash other teachers, no. Um, the way I teach is I, I box for eight years. And the way my coach instructed me is the way I, I broke it down in the rock to my kids who are now badass adults in their own right. Uh, so I use that influence and that inspiration to Ricky Standard's way of teaching me and Shaquem and Panama. Ricky Standard was one of the guys, or the two brothers, that when Duran beat um, the Scottish uh, boxer that year to become the champ, you see two Panamanian guys get up and hug Duran. Those were my trainers at the original Gleason's gym when I box as a youngster. I'm saying so that's another story but um I use that approach to teach to break down every bit of element that I taught my members I'm saying to become who they are and that's why we look so different so yeah variety is the key variety and the difference and the and um the way you teach the way you speak you don't hammer it you I showed and proved first to my kids. Sure did. I showed and proved to Mike, and he was like, oh, shit. Because Mike didn't believe in me at first. Even though I battled with Tiny, he was like, hey, this fat fuck can't really be talking this shit. And when he, Mike saw me battle all these people, I left Mike with his jaw down. And he'll tell you, I proved my style. So I proved to all my kids, my family, my clan, that this will work. And all my clan went out and bust ass, became champions, and became assassins outright in their own way. Okay? Everybody in the world knows my clan. Okay? And this style. Big ups to all the other styles. But this style. Why do you feel that the mastermind, quote-unquote, style received, uh, you know, hate? Because we did different, we did different things, man. We did everything against the rules of the norm, of the uniform, of the trend. We went against that shit. I went against that shit since back then. Fuck being uniformed and trendy. 
I went against that in respect to others. I'm not bashing other styles. I'm not, don't get it twisted, I'm not bashing other styles. I just went against the uniform and the trend. You understand? Understand that? Those who know comprehension know what I'm talking about. I'm not bashing the style. I just went against